Hey, fandom. Welcome back. Cowboy Joe here with my buddy here, Jeff. Hey, fandom, we have a new show for you tonight. Thank you for taking the time to join us. Hey, we got the win this this weekend, so big news. Great stuff for the Panthers. Jeff, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, that's right. It's it's always good to get the first win of the season. Uh, you know, so what if it came week three? If I'd much rather would have it come week one, but excited for the team, excited for Matt Rule. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what this – brings you know like uh, is this a stepping stone of uh, of more wins um it, it seems like the team played together and you know they they came out with a win granted they played a, a rookie quarterback and uh, his second start for his career but um hey a win is a win we'll take it and uh, let's hope it, it uh, builds from there and remember last week we talked about how the defense needed to step up and i think this week they proved to us they could Oh, yeah, they definitely stepped up. I mean, they had four turnovers in the game, and uh, they've got six takeaways this year, which is second in the NFL. So uh, that's that's impressive. Go Carolina. So, um, yeah, four turnovers this week alone, and they had two sacks. Of course, they had zero sacks coming into the game, and they had eight quarterback hits. They had three entering th- this week three game. That's so. Uh, you what know, about just, the penalties, they, they, I didn't see many. No, in fact, there was only three penalties in the game. I think they had, was it maybe five week one and eight or nine week two, and then uh, only three in, in week three. So, uh, they're, they're, they're improving in that area too. So fandom, you know, this is the first win for the Panthers. Is this an ongoing thing? Is this going to be contagious? Is this, are we going to just take it over and say, hey, you know what? Let's build a second win and then go for a third and then maybe possibly a fourth and see how it goes for the season? What do you think? I mean, that's kind of what we have to look at. And, I mean, as far as the whole winning is contagious, just like losing is contagious, uh, as, a, as a coach, as someone who plays the game, tell me a little bit about – Tell us about how winning can be contagious. How does that even? What's the psychology? Uh, the psychology of of uh, winning and how that affects to the next game, the next couple games. It, it man, it's a swagger. It's it's a swagger that you have in the locker room. It's a swagger that you have with your team. It's something that you build when you get that win and you build it and you start saying, okay, you know what? We're coming out of this funk that we are in, and now we're back. You know, on track. We feel like we're on top of the world. We feel like the Patriots. You know, and that's how I think Carolina's feeling right now. They're feeling on top of the world. We got this win for the new coach, new era, new team. We got that win. Now let's build off it. And that swagger, let me tell you, it's a momentum builder. It's going to build that momentum. And I think this team is going to start catching it. And I, I do feel that they're turning the page from, you know, the first couple of weeks of mistakes. They're turning that page. Yeah, and I was, of course, I'm always rooting for the for the Panthers to win. But you know, going into this game, uh, going across the country, you don't have your your playmaker Christian McCaffrey. He's not available. I was thinking there might be somewhat of a letdown. The defense wasn't doing anything prior to this game, uh, but you know what? They they pulled up their bootstraps. They played for themselves. They played for the coach. They played for their fans, and they got the W. And and uh, you know that that's great to see. There's a lot of teams who haven't. Who haven't. Something. It's team football they played. I, I'd watch that game and they played team football. As much as I hated going back and forth between my Cowboy game and the pa- Panther game, let me tell you something. Every time I put back on the Panthers, they were playing team football. They were not, you know, there were no solo tackles. There were some major solo tackles, yes, but they were swarming on that ball. Every time that ball came out and Eckler tried to run, anybody who tried to try to touch that ball, they were all over it. And that's what I liked about the defense. Yeah, I thought Jeremy Chin had a great game. Shaq Thompson, Brian Burns. I mean, just looking at um, at Thompson and Chin, they had 13 tackles and 12 tackles uh, each. So, right. I mean, that's that's – and Shaq also had he started off the uh, the turnovers with that um, popping the ball loose, and uh, you know it just kind of it, it grew from there. Uh, Brian Burns got to the quarterback a couple times. Uh, he knocked the ball out twice. I think one was the turnover, and then another one was I think it was just an incomplete pass. But I mean, so close to another turnover in that regard. Let me um, tell you something: confidence and momentum mm-hmm. are a great shift, and this team showed it yesterday. The momentum they had and that pace that they kept, 
And that just grew their confidence. And let me tell you, it's going to keep going. And, hey, let's talk about, you know, the big elephant in the room right now, Mike Davis. Dude. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Can we see a two-headed horse now coming out of this uh, – Often? That's that's what I kind of wanted to talk to you about because you know everyone's talking about how Christian McCaffrey does this and uh, he he has like ninety five percent of the team snaps which is just you know that's a lot especially for a guy of his size and a guy who's taking a pounding like he is uh, not only week in week out but now consecutive seasons and such so they have to find an answer to give him some some rest some breathers you know he can still be. The, the primary carrier, the, the the weapon on offense, but shoot, you got to give him some rest. And I think Mike Davis showed that he can, he can fulfill that role. You know, he may not be as uh, dynamic of a player as Christian well, McCaffrey, yeah, but I think he could. I think, I think honestly, this team has two great, I'm not saying great running backs because there's only one great and that's CMC, but uh, <laughs> Davis is a great compliment to CMC. So I think, yeah, if we if if the offense starts building some plays around Mike Davis, you could see some rest for McCaffrey, you know, so you don't have to give him 95% of the snaps. You could give him 80% and then, you know, yeah. see where it goes. But I think, yeah, he had a great game. I, I'm yeah, just, I was impressed. Just looking at his stat line, he had 13 carries for 46 yards, and then he had eight catches for 45 yards, including a yeah. touchdown. And that's he's now he now has 16 catches in the last six quarters, so uh, you know he's definitely showing what he can do in that role, and uh, hopefully he has a role when McCaffrey returns, so that we can keep McCaffrey fresh. And uh, uh, I, think, I think they do. I think they'll build some plays around Davis because you know what, you cannot just when McCaffrey comes back, you just cannot shell this guy and you know and put him in the bench. I think this guy needs to be utilized. And, you know, these third downs, a dual back threat that could catch the ball is very, very, you know, this that will hurt defenses a lot. Oh, yeah, especially if they don't know it's coming or if they can be, you know, kind of tricky in, uh, you know, how they present that type of formation or offense or, you know, the whole. Hey, I would line him up in the I formation and put him in fullback <laughs> and put McCaffrey at halfback and boom, let's see what happens. Right, because everyone's going to follow McCaffrey. Yeah. And- Everyone's going to follow McCaffrey, especially if he motions out wide. Mm-hmm. And uh, everyone is uh, thinking he's going to get the ball. And, and uh, there you go. Pitch it or throw it to Davis going the other way. Boom. You've, you've got yeah. at least four or five yards. I would think a- that a- that a play would work. Yeah, as a, a decoy. decoy. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So we talked about Shaq. We talked about Jeremy Chin. Uh, Derek Brown, the rookie, he had five tackles. Yeah, amazing. I was impressed. Very impressed. Three play. tackles for a loss. So he had four solos and, and one assist. And, uh, uh, yeah, Derek Brown, you know, it's going to take some time. It's going to take some time, a couple games for him to gel. And, and uh, heck, we, even had, we didn't even have preseason. So uh, you got to figure that as well. Um, Derek Brown looked good. I thought that uh, Justin Burris looked good. I thought that Ra- Rasul Douglas looked pretty good. Uh, Dante Jackson had the interception. He had a couple pass breakups too, but then he left with a toe injury. I think the team is calling it a foot injury, and we're not quite sure, uh, you know, how severe that is. And Shaq Thompson also had a neck injury too. And again, we don't know the severity, at least as of uh, uh, as of the time here, Monday evening. Uh, we don't know the severity of those injuries. But uh, the way that Matt Rule was talking in his press conference today, it didn't seem like it was that much of a concern, but, you know, definitely something to think about uh, moving forward. Um, well, they're going to see the team doctor. They're going to they're gonna do as much as they can, x-rays if needed, or, you know, just get more precaution with Dante Johnson because Jackson is a, it's a good cornerback. It's a good he, – he does fill in a good gap for you guys. Um, Shaq, if, if Shaq is gone for at least a, a game or two, that hurts the team. Like, like I said, mm-hmm. winning is contagious, but also injuries are also a – a wrench in that uh, in that gear, so I'm I'm kind of scared. Hopefully, he doesn't miss any games, and you know they continue with this confidence that they're building because you know they built that confidence the first two games. Like I said, those were their preseason games. Now it's all to the now it's all about wins, and I think you know against and Arizona, get, I think they got it and getting better too. And and uh, we we can't we can't not talk about the uh, the review of game. Th- Three without mentioning Joey Sly, because and and uh, you know Bridgewater didn't necessarily have a lot of uh, 
luck or a lot of uh, success in the red zone. But the fact that uh, Joey Sly was able to nail five field goals, that was huge. And uh, now he's nine for nine on the year. He hasn't missed, uh, except he's missed two extra points. But he hasn't missed. And uh, well, keep in mind, he led the NFL in field goals from 50 yards or more last year with eight in 11 tries, I believe it was. And he hasn't even had any 50-yard attempts yet this year. So Joey Sly is uh, definitely someone we should talk about, too, and, and uh, thank him. Uh, last year, the Panthers had uh, a, a game where I think he won the game for him. Uh, so you could say that he kind of won the game for him because his 15 points was critical. It was, and it, 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 it changed the pace of the game. You know, they didn't score touchdowns, but at least they put points on the board, and that that's what really matters. you got to put bo- – every time you drive down the field, you got to put some points on the board, even if it is three. So did you see the last play of the game? Where no, uh, I did not. Unfortunately, I'm sorry, fans. I didn't. I was so <laughs> with uh, oh yeah, well, my cowboy game that I, I didn't catch the last couple of minutes. But so the, let me let me paint the picture. So the Chargers were down five, and of course, there's not much time left. They were out of timeouts. Um, they had a a passing play down to maybe like the 10, 12 yard line to Keenan Allen. He caught the ball and lateraled the ball to Austin Eckler, who was kind of trailing him behind. And he missed completely. I and saw it, that in And ESPN. Eckler missed it completely. If that <laughs> – That would have been a touchdown. It would that have been would have been a touchdown, and we would have been, uh, you know, crying. Talking different today. We would have been talking differently today. Just because that lateral was not <laughs> an accurate pass, I guess, if you will. Um, so there, The yeah, football there, gods wanted the Panthers to win. That's I guess. Crazy. I guess that's what it boils down to. Hey, so so let's talk about next week. And uh, that's their home game week four against Arizona, against Kyler Murray. And uh, if you remember, last year they played Arizona. I think it was week three uh, yeah. where they got a win. They won 38-20. to 20. That was in Arizona. And that was against Kyler Murray. So uh, granted, this is a, a different team, a different coaching staff. You know, there's some different players on the team. Um, and, and, but, and also take, take – uh, Let's put this into uh, perspective. This Arizona team is a whole lot different than last year's. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, they are. And they're coming off a loss. So they're going to be stinging a little bit and, uh, you know, trying to right that ship. Um, you know, but the, the players who were on the team last year who beat Arizona, I mean, they're going to they're going to have that feeling that they'll be able to compete with these guys on the field and uh, and win. And hopefully that is contagious, as we were just talking about with some with the other players, the newer players. And uh, we got to get this this next W. Gosh, if they could go two and two, um, that would be uh, that'd be great. And you know, we would not necessarily have to talk about uh, Trevor Lawrence again. Of course, he's always going to be a topic, but I think that's kind of a distraction. I mean, you remember last year with Miami saying, "Oh, we're going to tank for Tua," and then what happened? Obviously, they got Tua, but. Tua got hurt. You, you just never know what's going to happen, and you don't really want to put all your eggs in that uh, Lawrence basket. If you well, let me tell you that. something. They tank for Tua, but they're still the same old Dolphins. <laughs> so, yeah. Who are they tanking for this year then? Because honestly, I, yeah, the Trevor Lawrence talk I think should be out of Carolina's you know mind, out of these players' mind, it, especially Bridgewater. You know, for a quarterback that's a starter and think everybody talking about – Lawrence coming in as the number one pick that, you know, that affects him, you know, mm-hmm. let's just let's put it in perspective. You know, the, we are all human, you know, and we're all competing for something and to talk that, you know, there's a fresh new guy coming in or that's what we want or that's who right. Carolina wants affects the play of Bridgewater. Now we need to stop talking about that because we don't know if that's going to happen. Honestly, mm-hmm. I think the Panthers are way off the draft pick to get uh, Trevor Lawrence. I think it's going to be between Jets yeah, I mean the Jets. They they don't even know. They they, I don't, they don't know how to win for one. But or Atlanta. Hey, you never know. Atlanta's been tanking <laughs> everywhere. So Atlanta. That's the new. Uh, that's the new phrase. There is. Uh, um, oh, you pulled in Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you had a lead and lost. <laughs> <laughs> we can laugh about the Falcons. I'm gonna start hashtagging all my Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. Um, also, I mean, if you look at the uh, – we mentioned the Cowboys, how they're an onside kick away from yeah. being 0-3. But Tennessee, the Titans, they're 3-0, and 
And all three of their wins came down to a game-winning drive. They could also be 0-3 or 1-2, and two, however you look at it. But, um, you know, you're, you're as good as your record is, right? And uh, the weird 2020 season. It's a weird one. Uh-huh. You know, yeah. To, to see the 49ers, you know, with their their struggles. They, they have a lot of injuries, too. The 49ers have a lot of injuries. Uh, there's a lot of uh, good players, you know, elite players being injured early and out for season, you know. So IR is a major key point. There's a lot of players. The Eagles tying to the Bengals. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm not a fan of the Eagles, but hey. How do you tie uh, the band? How do you not go for that field goal there at the at the in the overtime? I, how, how do you how do you go how do you go zone deep twenty yards out and let a running back catch the ball and put the first down on you? How do you do that? <laughs> uh, you know, teams have their problems. It's it's good to talk about other teams with problems. Um, how about you know oh, we talked about I, the we could talk about the eagle problems all day. I, that's <laughs> I love that. We talked about the Jets, right? Um, the Jets have scored four touchdowns this year, four total. Um, the Giants have scored three touchdowns. That was going to more than the Giants. Total. <laughs> the NFC East, it's uh, who, who can get to seven wins first? Oh, goodness. Yeah, and, and, you know, the thing is with the Cowboys right now, I think we have a little gap before we may play the bigger uh, fish. We got the bigger one right now with Seahawks. It was mm-hmm. a close game. We had the, We had the lead. We lost it. There's no excuse, you know. If you want to be paid Patrick Mahone money, you gotta win like Patrick Mahomes. I'm sorry, I I'm, I love Dak. He's he's a great quarterback, but if you want to prove to me that you know you earn, you want that money and you you're trying to earn it, you gotta come out of these games victorious, not yeah. throw an interception. I get I get you there. And there's other quarterbacks that are stepping up. Look at Josh Allen, what he's oh doing. God. Yes, with with Buffalo, and and you know before the season, we're thinking you know. Dak Prescott's got to be better than Josh Allen. And now you you put that question mark. It's like, really? Now let's just let's see what happens with the Browns. If we lose with the Browns, I fandom, I'll officially burn my Cowboy jersey and become a Panther fan for life. <laughs> Can we do that we on really the air? First. Can we do that on the air if that happens? <sighs> yes, we could. <laughs> All right, you heard it here first. All right, um, anything else? Any parting thoughts here as we conclude this episode and and look forward to next week? Honestly, I I think uh, uh, fandom, you guys are in a great place. The confidence is going to build with this defense. The offense, uh, again, Bridgewater has to find his confidence. Uh, you know, moving away from all that talk of Trevor Lawrence and stuff like that, I think he has to find it himself. It's not up to us to do it for him. He, he has to be – he's the professional. He has to come in there and, you know what, it's my job. It's my job to lose. I'm here to win it. So I think he needs to step up a little bit more. But, you know, from a, from a fan standpoint that I see, you guys are in a great position to, you know, take the win in Ari- uh, here in Carolina against Arizona and, and build off that. So I'm, I'm confident. And with no Christian McCaffrey. So I'm very confident in that. Yeah, exactly. We we just gotta keep up the uh, the good work and, and uh, hope that winning continues to be contagious. All right. Yeah. Um. One other thing I wanted to talk about is uh, you know, if you're interested in coming on the show and you want to talk Panthers with us, uh, just let us know. Drop us a, a, a an email, or you can also send a message on Twitter. That's uh, at Carolina underscore Fandom. Uh, that might be the best way to reach us actually because. Uh, that's something that we look at more readily. Um, other than that, I'm I'm pretty or, good. I'm, I'm looking forward to next week. Toe with me talking football, we could do it. <laughs> you know? All right, excellent. Well, for for Cowboy Joe, I'm Jeff Hasley. We appreciate it. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next week. Thank you, fandom. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.